Hey guys, it's Davin here at brewbits.com. Now I thought we would do another recipe as I haven't done one for a little while. And this time I thought I would make some banana wine. And this is a banana wine I made uh, a couple of years ago. And it's absolutely delicious, uh, very zingy, lots of alcohol, slightly sweet, and it's got a fantastic banana flavour and lots and lots of lovely yellow colour going on. So I thought we would show you how to make a banana wine. And we're going to need a little bit of stuff. First of all, we're going to need bananas. We're going to use here three pounds, one and a half kilos uh, of very lovely ripe bananas. Don't worry if they've got a few black marks and bruises on them. That's not a problem. We're also going to need an orange and a lemon. And this might look a little bit pasty because this is actually off of one of my lemon trees. So, we are going to need some sugar. We're actually going to need three pound of sugar and that's split into two types. Here we've got supermarket sugar and here we've got some uh, brewing and winemaking sugar. So come on in James, have a quick look at them. They are different and they do two different things. Um, back to me a second James, because although they used love to eat sugar and they'll eat both of those and they'll turn those absolutely lovely to alcohol difference between them is the supermarket granulated sugar will add a sweetness to the wine and if we used three pounds of granulated sugar it might be a little bit too sweet so here we're half and half and the brewing and wine making sugar will allow the yeast to turn the sugar to alcohol but it won't add any of that extra sweetness so it creates a really nice balanced wine that's basic our ingredients. We'll need a few other bits and bobs. We'll need some yeast nutrients. Uh, we'll need some yeast. Uh, we'll need some Camden tablets, some fermentation stopper, and some pectinase. And we'll go through those as we go through them. We're also gonna need some finings. Here I'm using VinClear. Cleaner and sterilizer, and here I'm using VWP. And a few bits of equipment. So, we're obviously gonna have our fermentation buckets. We need a pot for the stove, and this needs to be about 10 litres because we're going to put lots of water in there and we're also going to be putting um, our bananas in. And here is a, uh, what we call a mashing and sparging bag. It's basically a big sack. And that's so we can put our bananas into and take them out nice and easily. We're also going to use a grater because I'm going to want the zest from the orange and lemon. A um, Think it'd be Bobby juicer to get the juice out of the orange and lemon as well. And then we've got a thermometer so we can check the temperature, our hydrometer so we can check our specific gravity, the trial jar which it fits into, and then we've got our uh, siphon, spoon for stirring, and our big chopping knife and chopping board. So once we've got all of that together, let's get brewing. It takes a little while to bring four and a half litres or a gallon up to the boil, so I'm going to do a little bit of cheat first of all, and I'm going to get uh, that going in the kettle first of all, and gradually put it into my pan. Whilst the kettle's boiling, I thought I would prepare my stock pot, and here I've got my large mashing and sparging bag, and I'm going to just pop that over. And now, onto the chopping. Here I've got my bananas, and as we all know, at the end of a banana we got the stalky thing for ripping them open, but I don't want that because that's quite bitter and not very nice. So come on in James, because I'm now going to start chopping our bananas up. And basically you want simple rounds of about a centimetre. And the same goes for the other end, don't want that. And a whole lot goes in. Almost perfect timing. Last of the bananas. And the boiling water. So I'm literally just gonna pop this on the heat to start with now. I've put the heat on high. Now I'm gonna pour in our water. So we need four and a half liters on top of our bananas. So that's one. And I'm going to need to put the kettle back on because I might need to get another half a litre. There we go. So I need to get another three litres into that. Okay. 
Okay, so that's our four and a half liters. Now come on in, James, and you'll see that the bananas are starting to turn black, and there's a lovely, gorgeous smell coming off. It's not quite at the boil. It does take a little time to come back up to the boil. And once you get it to the boil, you need to turn it down a little bit and simmer it for 45 minutes. So I'm gonna pop the lid on. I'll see you in 45 minutes. Our bananas have been simmering away quite happily for 45 minutes. I've given them the odd prod and a little stir every now and then, but nothing major, just, a, just an odd little prod. And you can see they've um, weirdly gone black. They've also lost their whitish color and gone this kind of pinky tinge. But now we're going to remove the bananas. So carefully, because of course this is still bloody hot. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Oh, that's steaming hot. Yeah, that is hot. <laughs> what more would you expect? So I'm putting them in there and that's just gonna stay out of the way. Now, let's move this over here a second just off the heat. So down here, I have got an empty sterilized bucket and I'm here using a 10 litre bucket. And I'm gonna gently, but carefully, pour our banana infused water into our bucket. Lovely. Now it does look a weird colour, I don't know if you can get that colour James, it's almost a, a reddy, black, greyness to it. Quite an interesting colour. It's going to be very, very different than our finished wine. Now we're going to add our sugars and we're going to gently pour them in so as not to splash them. So that was the brewing sugar also called dextrose, and that was one and a half pounds, or 750 grams. And this is our granulated sugar that you would get normally from like, a supermarket. And this is gonna add a finished sweetness to the one. So stir those now until it's all dissolved and you feel no grittiness in the bottom. So now for our lemon, and we need to zest the lemon by taking the outside off. So on the lemon we want um, the this part of the lemon because this has got loads of these little um, dimples and in those little dimples are fantastic lemon oil. The white area, the pith, uh, that's the bitter parts and we don't really want that. So we want to zest our lemon and get all that lovely zest off of it. And we have one naked lemon. Right, so now onto the orange. We're gonna do exactly the same with the orange. Cool, and now we also have one naked orange. And we got our lemon zest and our orange zest. Is we need the juice. So you can either do a Jamie Oliver thing for your fingers and or you can get right in there. And I tend to find, personally, I get a lot more juice out of an orange by using a juicer. So we got quite a lot of juice out of that orange, so I'm gonna pop it straight in to our juice, our um, banana water, and I'm gonna chop the lemon in half and do the same with the lemon. Cool, and we've got quite a bit of mush in for my lemon, so I'm gonna pop that in as well. In that goes, pop our lemon juice in as well. And now the zests from the orange and the lemon go in as well. This is gonna add a load of lovely zinginess to our finished banana wine and give it just that extra little bit of interest. Our banana infused water is now still really hot. So I'm gonna pop the lid on, because before we can go any further, we need to let this cool to 20 degrees C. For you, it's just been a few seconds. I've had to wait a few hours for our temperature to come right down. Come on in James and have a look at this, because 
it has changed a little bit. It's nice and lovely. I'm just quickly checking it with our thermometer just to make sure we are at about 20 degrees. And we are. So before I add our yeasts and our yeast nutrient, I've taken a sample with our hydrometer and it's coming out at 1.110, which is pretty blooming high. And this could make a wine about 16, 17% alcohol. So it's one to be reckoned with. So what are we gonna add? So here I've got some yeast nutrients and our yeast nutrient is just a kind of uh, crystalline powder. And we're gonna add one teaspoon. Now what this is, this is um, like your vitamins uh, that we sometimes take. Uh, this is your vitamins for your yeast. It helps them uh, work really hard and also helps them to um, munch all the yeast. Okay, and then we've got our pectolase, and we're gonna add a teaspoon of pectolase as well. And again, this is a white powder. So in fruit, there is uh, something called pectin. And pectin, when you make jam, is absolutely fantastic because it helps set the jam. However, in wines, it um, has, basically, if you get pectin in a wine, at the end of the process, you're gonna end up with a hazy wine. And there's nothing that's gonna clear it, not finings or anything. Um, and pectinase basically breaks down the pectin and allows for you to have a nice, clear wine. So once that's in, we'll quiff that a quick stir. Like so, and then I'm gonna take my yeast. And here I'm using uh, a general all-purpose white wine yeast. And I'm just gonna simply chop the top off. And sprinkle it on the top. It'll take a few hours for the yeast to get going, but when they do, they will really get going. And within about 12 hours, you should see lots and lots and lots of bubbles coming up. So, all I'm gonna do now is pop our lid on our bucket, and I'm gonna put this in a warm place at 20 degrees C. Uh, for the next seven days. And I'm not going to touch it, I'm just going to leave the, the lid loosely on like that. And that will prevent any dust or um, anything else getting into it. And the yeast will create lots and lots of carbon dioxide and create a lovely layer on the top of the wine, which will give it protection from anything like bacteria. So, into our warm cupboard, seven days, 20 degrees C. It's been a week since we put our banana wine into our warm cupboard. Come on in James, have a look at this because it's changed quite a bit. The smell of it's absolutely fantastic. Lovely, banana really loads of citrus as well. But it's really slowed down its fermentation now. And so to keep it safe, and so it can finish the rest of its fermentation, we need to transfer it to a demijohn. And the way I'm gonna do this, I've sterilized my demijohn, and I've also sterilized my siphon. Now, in here, all of those uh, bits from the oranges and lemons will have settled down and a large amount of the yeast will have also settled at the bottom. So we need our siphon to have this little end on here and this is a sediment trap, it does pop off and hopefully that will help us prevent them getting lots of that sediment in our demijohn and so we will get wine. So I'm just gonna pop it in at the top, come on in James. So as you can see, there's a load of bits of lemon floating around, I'm just gonna go below that and on this end of the tube, I'm gonna give a little suck. And then pop that into my demijohn, lower it right down so we don't get any splashes, and let it siphon through. Now, some of you will say in the comments, I'm sure, that, oh, I've put my lips on the end of the siphon, and no, oh, that's gonna bring bacteria, and why do I sterilize if I've got the lips on the end of the siphon? The bacteria in your mouth really won't affect the wine at all. The uh, alcohol in the wine will kill any of the bacteria that's in the mouth. However, if you do want to be a little more finickety, then you can use this. This is an auto siphon, and this little tube here uh, goes up and down. You put that in the wine like that, and you lift the tube up and you push it down, and it will actually start the flow for you. So, if you don't want to do it by suction, you can do it by an auto siphon. It takes a little bit of time for it to siphon down through, so I'll see you back in a moment. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of sediment and there's quite a bit of uh, zest and lemon and orange pulp. 
We don't need that, so away that goes. What we do need though, is this demijohn full here. And you can see we've taken it up to the bottom of the neck, and now we need to pop in an airlock. And to me, James, because here we go, here's our airlock, and I've half filled the bottom bubbles with a sterilizing solution. And that now pops in our airlock, sorry, into our demijohn. And now this goes back into my warm cupboard at 20 degrees C for another two weeks to ferment. It'll take about another 12 hours before you start seeing some more bubbles come back through. And then, but even if you do in the next week or two see the bubbles stop, just leave it, let it do its thing. If the yeast in here will start turning some of the other compounds into other acids and that will add flavor and will basically finish the wine off. So this now goes back into my warm cupboard for two weeks. For you guys, it's just been a couple of seconds. For me, I've had to wait a couple of weeks uh, for us to get here. And our banana wine has been fermented away for the last two weeks and it stopped bubbling through the airlock. So I've decided, come on in James, have a look at this, to take a little sample with our trial jar. And it's coming out pretty low. It's coming out at 0 0.990. And that's telling me that the yeast have done all of the work that they needed to do. And they've also then carried on doing a bit of extra work and started to work on other compounds within the wine and gonna make it absolutely fantastic. So, it's now time to start siphoning it. Now, down at the bottom here, we've got a bit of sediment already, so we need to be careful not to get that sediment. And the way I'm gonna be siphoning it is the same as last time with our simple siphon. And down here, I've got a sterilized demijohn, and of course, I've sterilized my siphon as well. So, in our siphon goes, and again, I'll have a good little suck and pop it down in. As always, we're gonna follow the wine down rather than pushing the siphon right to the bottom. And that means we'll make sure that we'll get as little sediment from the bottom as possible. So whilst that's going, time for a beer. You're never ever gonna get every last little drop out. So that's gonna disappear over to there. And what we've got left is some nice clean banana wine. So our next step now is to add something uh, called fermentation stopper. This is potassium sorbate, or you could also see it um, sometimes called stabilizer. And what this is going to do, this is going to kill any remaining yeast that are in there and it's gonna help us move on to the clearing process. So in the cup here, I have simply just poured the contents of the um, trial jar. And then this, these are just little, kind of little stalks. Um, and then it goes in there. And we just give that a stir for it to dissolve. It just takes a couple of moments. So our fermentation stopper has dissolved. And all we're going to do now is gently pour it back into our wine. There we go. Now, during the fermentation process, uh, I'm going to pop the airlock back in. During the fermentation process, the yeast created a lot of carbon dioxide. Most of that you saw come out through the bubbler, but a lot of it also got trapped within the wine. So what we need to do now to both get the fermentation stopper mixed into our damage on a wine and knock that CO2 out. We've got to do like we would do with a can of Coke if you're trying to make it flat. So the way we do it, grab hold firmly and give it a stir. And you'll notice loads and loads and loads of bubbles are coming back up through. And that's not the fermentation kicking off again. That's not the yeast doing anything. That's literally the carbon dioxide that was dissolved in our wine being knocked out. And we need to do this a few times. So there's quite a bit in there. See, that's really all coming out still. So I'm gonna give it another go now. And now I'm gonna leave this for another five, 10 minutes. Every time I walk back through the kitchen, and I'm gonna give it another swirl, probably another 
four times this evening, so five times tonight in total. And then I'm going to probably do this again over the next couple of days, um, twice, possibly three times a day. Um, and then that's going to help knock all of that carbon dioxide out and it's going to help it when we add our findings to make this banana wine super duper clear. So I've been degassing our banana wine now for the last couple of days and pretty much knocked all the carbon dioxide out of it. So now we can move on to the findings process. And here I'm using uh, some Young's findings, is uh, two sachets, uh, one's Chitto San and one's Kisel Salt. And basically what we do is we simply chop the corner off A and we gently pour it in. You'd be surprised there's enough in here. Squeeze it all out. <laughs> Cool, so we squeezed Finings A into it and we put our bubbler back on and we now give it another swirl. Not really vigorous, but vigorous enough to mix it all through. Beautiful, so what we need to do now is we need to leave this for an hour for the Finings A to start doing its thing. It's been an hour since we added our sachet A of Finings and now we're gonna add sachet B. And this is the other side of it. And there are lots of different finings types and you can use whichever finings you prefer to use. It just speeds up the process of clearing. You don't have to use any finings at all. You could just pop this somewhere cool and leave it for six months and it'll eventually clear on its own. But this helps speed up the process. So in sachet B goes, and we're gonna pop the Bubbler back in, and we're going to again give it a really good swirling around. And that's going to combine A and B. And the way that all findings works is that they basically, in here, all the particles in here are negatively charged. All the sediment in here is positively charged, and so they're going to attract each other, they're all going to clump together, and then any sediment that's in here that was floating around is going to precipitate out and drop to the bottom. So this is going to go somewhere cool now, uh, about 15, 16 degrees, and it's going to sit there for about two weeks. And over those two weeks, you'll notice it will start to become beautifully clear from the top, and you'll get a nice layer of sediment down at the bottom. Then in two weeks time, once it's beautifully clear, we're then gonna rack it off into a nice new clean demijohn that's been sterilized, and then straight into six sterilized bottles, pop in the corks, leave it somewhere then for six months, pop it in the fridge, pop open a bottle of banana wine in six months time, and it's gonna be absolutely heaven. Banana wine, trust me, with the lemon and the orange zinginess from this, this is gonna be delish. So, enjoy your banana wine. <laughs>